So before we started this show, we had other news. Out of nowhere, we get a call from Tim Bradley telling us that Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk is off. And of course, I start throwing the knives and, and I'm shooting and I, I told you, I told you. And then I calm myself down and said, there's nothing prophetic about me telling you guys that Alexander Usyk wasn't going to get in the ring with Tyson Fury. This wasn't me uh, prognosticating anything. I just know this game. I know this sport. I know the guys in this sport. I know what I'm looking at. I didn't think it would be because of a cut or anything like that. Apparently, Tyson Fury has a cut over his eye. That's why the fight's being postponed, possibly even canceled. Is what it is, y'all. I told y'all the fight wasn't happening. I didn't know Tyson Fury was going to get cut or anything like that. But I knew this fight would not happen, especially on the date it was being told to us it was going to happen. How did I know? I'm looking at a Tyson Fury who's a little bit older, who's been around the block more than enough times, who's done enough in this sport to retire yesterday or the day before that or the day before that. He does not want to get in the ring with somebody like Alexander Usyk. If he does, he ain't going to do it until he knows he's ready. And that's why we get uh, reports of a cut eye and all these other things. The number one thing I knew, he wasn't getting in the ring with Alexander Usyk, especially not as soon as everyone was told he would be getting in the ring with him. So you guys take it from there. Um, I, it's it's one of them things that you don't want to be proud that you're right about. However, I don't like being doubted. I don't like being questioned. I don't like people looking at me saying, oh, what is he talking about? Maybe now you kind of take me a little bit more serious. And not to say that you guys weren't taking me serious before, but if you needed something to let you know, Sean Porter knows what he's talking about when he's talking about this game and the fighters in this game. This is a prime example right here. Yep. Showtime, Sean Porter dropping knowledge. And Sean, we knew you were credible since day one. So we always had you back here <laughs> on ProBox TV. That's why I'm here. Sean doesn't, Sean doesn't want to say, I told you so, but he's saying, I told you yeah. so. so. So we'll say it. We told, we'll Sean say it told you, you so. Bro. We'll say it for you. Sean Porter <laughs> told you so here. As the for February 17th fight between Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury is officially postponed. Multiple news outlets are reporting that the cut suffered by Tyson Fury will keep him out of that fight. Some Twitter accounts are saying, are you really surprised? Anyone thought that this fight was going to pop off in February? Now they're saying June, as, as Sean mentioned. All right, we got Pauly Malinaji, Chris Algieri here in studio. All right, Pauly, uh, what do you make of this news here, especially when you consider Daily Mirror was, was talking about how rumors were spreading that uh, this, this camp of Tyson Fury was maybe not as prepared for Alexander Uzik as some might think? Yeah, I mean... It's kind of like Groundhog Day. Tyson Fury being in a major, major... Oh, actually, today is Groundhog Day. Yeah, it literally what, is, what, a, what a coincidence. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's funny because, because it, Tyson Fury getting into a major, major promotion, big fight, and then, you know, right at the last second, kind of pulling out the rug and pulling out it and making the fight go later on. I, again, I'm just going to give my take. I think Fury's a master of mind games. Um, I'm not saying for sure he's not cut, but I have my doubts. Um, I think he's he knows how to kind of get your, your juices going, get you riled up. He did this to Vladimir Klitschko, if you remember. Got under his skin, got him crazy, probably had him in a crazy training camp, and then at the last minute he pulls out. And then later on they have the fight, and it's like a, a, a worn-out Klitschko. It's a Klitschko who's probably been so angry for such a long time, he's had a stop start, his camp, and all of a sudden, you know, it was a flat Klitschko, and, and Fury dominates the fight. I mean, of course, Fury making him look flat is part of why, you know, he, he had such a performance. But nonetheless, I think that, I, I, a piece of me feels like this is sort of a, a bit of mind games on the part of Fury as well. You know, uh, you hadn't heard a lot about him in camp. You hadn't heard a lot about him uh, in this training camp. Usually that means he's fully focused. Or that also could mean that he's kind of half-assing it because he knows he's going to pull out uh, and he's going he's gonna to get you going. He's going to get you to overtrain yourself and then pull out on you at the last minute and then get you back in there. And again, all the while, he's got you motivated. And you too much motivation for too long of a period of time can make you overtrain. Again, these are just my takes based on Fury's being a master of, 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 being, uh, of the mind game, of the game of psychology in this, because fighting is, is psychological as well as physical. And so a piece of me thinks that this was kind of always in the plans. A piece of me thinks that this was always going to happen. Uh, Sean Porter obviously is telling you this was going to happen. Sean Porter doubts the fight happens altogether. <laughs> uh, but I think that... You know, this this 
pulling out of this fight by Tyson Fury is not a shock at all. Mm. And uh, I, I, I now we'll see how how Usyk adjusts to it. Because now with your Usyk, you're wondering, okay, do I go back and readjust my training camp, train really, really hard again, and then risk this guy pulling out again? Or this, or what if you don't train as hard next time, and then he doesn't pull out, and then you're going into the fight where you're not fully ready? You know, it, it's, it's, again, the master of mind games. When you have the leverage like Tyson Fury has overall, where it's your date and, and you have the control, you're able to play these mind games. And, and Fury is very, very good at doing that. Yeah, Chris, what's your take on this whole situation with Fury pulling out and the fight being postponed? You know, there's all the speculation that the NFL is scripted. <laughs> it almost seems like sometimes the boxing is scripted. This is, this is one of those scenarios where it's a surprise because it's breaking news, but it's not that surprising when you look at the career of Tyson Fury. And like you said, Chant, the positions that they're in in terms of the leverage that he has, you look at the ages of the two fighters, this, this seems to help Tyson Fury more than it would. Alexander Usyk, if this is a ploy, if this is a, str a, str a strategic maneuver by Team Fury to get in the head of Alexander Usyk, to potentially have him overtrain, I think Usyk's 37, so mm -hmm. he has less time, and it's more and more difficult to train really hard um, as you get a little bit older, you get a little bit longer, and you're longer in the tooth, and as you get more frustrated with situations like this. Also, I just kind of look at it from the perspective of, of Tyson Fury. Um, there's, there's, there's no question that you know he's got a few screws loose upstairs. You know, he's, he's, he's crazy like a fox in, mm -hmm. in, in that yeah. way. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. he, you never know what's going through his camp. If he's not having a good camp, he's not going to say he's not having a good camp. He'll push the fight off because yeah. he's in control. He's in the driver's seat to do that. And it would aid him in this situation. And listen, that happens, especially in fights of this magnitude. If things aren't going well in camp, I you know, that's happened to every one of us probably sitting here. But if you don't have the, the leverage or the power that a Tyson Fury has where you can just postpone and say whatever, and he doesn't care what, what, what people think in terms of pushing it off. Oh, it'll happen. He'll go out there. He'll talk, whatever. Um, I still think he's suffering a little psychological trauma himself coming off of that Nganu fight. Mm. I mean, the, the, the stigma that he had to, to, to break off before going right into a hard training camp against the toughest guy that he's ever going to fight is a big deal. So you got to think of the psychology of these two guys, especially Tyson Fury going into this fight. When they announced how quickly the Usyk fight was going to come about after the Nganu fight, even right. before the fight even happened, that, to me, was a red flag. Oh, it was going to happen in December. Absolutely not. It's not going to come a few, a few months later. And now February is not that much later either. Right. So it's only a couple more months. So I, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that Fury is just kind of trolling, like you said, strategically getting into the mind of, of Usyk, taking control because he can, pushing the fight off so he can get a better training camp, get his mind right, get his body right. Um, so I, I do hope that the fight still happens. I do think it, it still may. Uh, Sean, you may be absolutely right. This fight might never happen, which wouldn't surprise me either. Well, but listen, when it comes to Tyson Fury, nothing surprises yeah. me. Fury versus Klitschko did eventually happen. You know, right. For those of you at home, just to explain, crazy like a fox means is you're really smart. You yes. know what I mean? Like, yes. it's, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, that wasn't every, a negative. Everything's premeditated, you know, and, and, and it kind of, you know, a fox will premeditate the plan and, and have attack, you know. And I feel like, again, my opinion, and it seems like the, the, the opinion of my, of my panel here as well, I think this is a bit premeditated. So, Sean, first of all, what are the lottery numbers? Uh, so we <laughs> played a Powerball there. <laughs> so we could figure out that. No, but um, let, let's, let's look at it from the Usyk perspective here. If, you're, uh, kind of, if you were in his camp, how do you handle this delay in training ahead of the fight of Fury? And if it goes to May or June, if you're in Usyk's camp, how do you handle that situation? Yeah, you know what? Because I... I I think I know uh, Tyson Fury based on small um, uh, uh, um, experiences with him. And also, of course, the bigger experiences, just seeing him on TV, seeing him in social media and things of that nature. You can kind of learn a person through all those kinds of things. Um, don't know Usyk as well. I've had some encounters with him, but he seems to be a fiery guy. He seems to be the kind of guy that will really go all in for camp. And when that happens and you get pulled out of something like this right here, I got to imagine he's going to be fired up. I got to imagine now he's shaking his head, feeling like we knew this was going to happen and he feels duped. Um, he's There's two choices you got to make if you're Alexander and his camp. Either we be patient, we dial it all the way back, we pull all the way back, everything, pull the energy. Does he have the ability to do that? I'm actually willing to bet that he doesn't. I got to imagine he might still make, move forward and get another fight. I, 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 I could be wrong. And, and again, like I'm not, I'm not a prophet. I'm not 
trying to predict things. But I got a feeling if the he's the kind of guy to me it seems like he's not fighting just for money. He's not just fighting just names. He he genuinely likes to fight. Of course, he likes to make his money, but I don't think he's like about, oh, it's got to be the perfect fighter at the perfect time and somebody, some name on my resume. I got a feeling Alexander Usyk may fight and and throw up the middle fingers. He seems like a throw up the finger to you. I'm going to move forward and do and do this thing because this is what I love kind of guy. Um, I'd be willing to bet that they don't wait. Um, I think it makes sense for them to wait. But I don't know if they wait. I don't know if they have what it takes to like pull it back and psychologically, physically, the whole nine, keep it together for someone like Tyson Fury. If it happens one time, you got to be willing to expect it to happen again. So I'm going to venture to say they don't wait and they take a fight, whether that's in February, March. I'm willing to bet they fight Alexander Usyk. I don't know who. But I think they're going to get in the ring. I th- you know what? That's a great. That's a great point, champ. Uh, I think that uh, that that would be a smart ploy because they, they, part of what Fury's doing is keeping Alexander Usyk out of the ring for a longer time. Let's remember he hasn't fought since the Dubois fight in the summer. So if you postpone it until June, and then you got to have that on your mind, where what if he gets postponed again after June? You know, your, your time outside the ring uh, it stays. Uh, uh, the longevity outside the ring increases, and uh, you know you're. We talked. We've talked about how how dangerous it is to have a long layoff, especially later in your career, where you're kind of slowing down. So, I think Usyk strikes me as that kind of guy too, where he may just take a fight. And I could see Fury actually trying to threaten him by, by saying, "If you take another fight, then our fight's off, even in June." And I, you know what? If he does that, I look at it like Fury never wanted to fight. Then, because I, I still believe this fight can happen. I still believe Fury wants this fight. I still believe this fight will happen. And Fury actually <laughs> is a guy I think wins the fight uh, because I think a focus Fury is too big, too strong for even the best Usyk who is a smaller guy naturally. But if Usyk takes another fight and Fury uses that against him to not fight him, then I have to start questioning whether Fury really wanted this fight ever, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, another thing. You know, the for the, you know, betting.ag's a sponsor here. For mm-hmm. all the bettors, I know my boy Tommy, he had a lot of parlays closing out with this fight. I know that guy's pissed right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of parlays that we're going to bet. The parlays that now we're on the way. Now you're messing with my money. Yeah. yeah. Now you're messing with my money. A lot of parlays are closing out with Fury versus Usyk. And now that's it. So I don't know what the odds are there because I'm not a, much of a gambler anymore. Anymore. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> with, with the, uh, I don't know what, um, what if, if the, when that fight gets canceled and postponed, if you can get an early payout or if you got to wait for the fight to happen later in the year or whatnot. But I know some people are going to be pissed off. I know at least one is going to be pissed off mm. about this uh, – this, uh, this fight being canceled because of the parlay issue. I'm, I'm pissed off. Uh, I'm not really that surprised. But you guys brought some really, really good points. I'm, I'm, I'm over here pondering all, all the, the great ideas that you're putting out there. Um, and, Sean, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying based on what it looks like, um, how, how Usyk tends to operate, right? He's one of those guys. He seems like you said he's going to go all in training camp. Um, he's not going to want to miss the opportunity to be in great shape and, and be primed and ready to fire. So I, I bet you the fighter – and Alexander Usyk wants to fight, and he's going to push for a fight. I believe the team around him is going to going to fight that hard as possible. They they mm-hmm. don't want to risk this potential huge payout with the Tyson Fury fight, especially coming off that Daniel Dubois fight where Usyk looked vulnerable. He got hit with a low blow, f- potential body shot. It got ruled a low blow, but he goes down hard. He's been hurt down to the body before. He was having he was struggling more in that fight than people expected. And I think any heavyweight can give Usyk trouble, like you mentioned, Champ, the size. He's a much smaller heavyweight in this modern era. So I would believe the team around him would be like, cool your horses, Champ. Let's just wait for this big one. We got it coming. We don't want anything else to go wrong, especially with the way, like I said, in terms of that, that last fight. Now, I mean, I, I agree with you, Champ, that I think the fight's actually going to happen at some point. So, and like I said, I'm, I'm sticking to the script of what the, the NFL writers have been doing for boxing. <laughs> I think Tyson Fury enters the ring at some point to fight Alexander Usyk. He's going to have Taylor Swift bring him down to the ring. Oh, no. And then we're going to get the fight. <laughs> i tell you, I tell you though, I, I don't hold as much stock in, in, in the Usyk's Lights fight. The ring was wet. Uh, and when you're a footwork fighter, I was a footwork. I was a wet ring again. I'm telling you, I was a footwork fighter. It ruins, you, it ruins all your angles. It ruins your, your ability to step off. When you're a footwork fighter, you're stepping off a lot and changing angles and all that stuff. A wet ring completely discombobulates that whole thing. It, 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 the fight evolves completely, completely differently when you're a footwork fighter and you have a wet ring. So, but that's I my point with the, with the team, though. I don't, if I it's don't, not a wet ring this the next time, it's something else. And but it's, why is take it, that is risk? It, it, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's been looking good up until that fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, 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 right now, you can't. It's not like it's a, it's a, 
it's a habit. But that goes to the point that could be just a one off because that of the goes wet to ring. the point that anything can happen. And risking this oh, mega wet rings fight. are never gonna be that. Well, that's what I said. It's not the wet ring next time. It's we'll, something we'll else. We'll fight in we'll fight in the desert next in, time. In, in Saudi Arabia where it doesn't rain. But listen, that's you go it. in there, listen, you twist your ankle. Anybody, it can happen to anyone. I, I, I mean, I'm just thinking about how how teams around Cuts. fighters operate. They're they're looking they're looking at the bottom line, look at the number. Mm. And like I said, Usyk is the is the warrior. He's the fighter. But Usyk's going to be looking at it. Is I want to win, so I want to stay consistent and keep winning, so that I fight myself yeah. sharp. The team may be saying, we don't want to ruin this payday. Whether he wins or loses it, this pay loses the fight against Fury. This payday is is so big, we don't want to ruin it. Right. Okay, so you, you for one payday, you're going to basically sell off your fighter because if he goes in not staying busy, not he probably like that, increases not, not his like chances that, not of like losing. That's never happened in boxing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Well, you, increase, you increase your chances of losing. No. Usyk's going to be looking at it like, if I stay busy and get a fight in between, I'm going to increase my chances of beating Fury because I'll have gotten, I'll have stayed active. So it's, yeah, it's a catch-22, I guess. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. You wanted I, to say something? I thought... Yeah, I fought uh, Keith Thurman. I think we ended up fighting in the in like June or in the summertime. We were supposed to fight previous uh, to that, like er, a, a few months prior to that, and he gets into a car accident. My dad did not believe that he got into a car accident. My dad is calling around Florida. He's calling police station. He's calling. <laughs> uh, uh, he's calling the the the, the, the like the nine one one ambulance. Phone, doing phone his, records. Doing, getting his phone records. Doing his due diligence. I appreciate that. My, my dad was doing his due diligence because if there's nothing wrong with this kid, we got to do something about this mm -hmm. because this is not right. So, Sean, I if, would, if your father... I would implore... Sean, you're saying if your father was on Team Usyk right now, he would be calling all kinds of training camps and find that out if Team Fury's Usyk, camp. call Fury, up, call up Kenny Porter. You have a special Fury's investigator. Really go. Special investigator, I, 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 go check it out. Hit Instant my song. dad up because at the <laughs> end of the day, when something like this happens, about a month or so out from the fight, you got to figure out... We need we need uh, Sean, we're documentation. Two weeks out. We're two weeks out. Two Screen. weeks out? Yep. That's it? Two Fe weeks. February 17th. Yeah. yeah, you need we need documentation. And yep. we need yep. and we, we need, need the we need photo not evidence, only does video the, evidence. Not especially, not only especially he's the done world this before. Especially he's done this not before. Only, not only does the world need it, Usyk camps need it because that that will support what decision they make mm. moving forward. That was my dad's reasoning for, for reaching out and finding out if there was truly an accident. If if it's if it's a true accident, we'll wait. We'll we'll be respectful. We'll wait. We'll give him his time. But if not, then we're gonna move forward. We're gonna make sure there's some sort of penalty uh placed so, on Keith, and and, so and Sean, we're gonna move forward. So, so Sean, was the accident? I take it the accident did happen because you guys fought. They you. they found my dad was like, hey, we found it is what it is. We're gonna wait. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and that's what you do with Alexander Usyk. He's this is a big decision to make. This is a big ass fight. Big money. The list goes on. You yeah. know. History when consider undisputed heavyweight yeah. championship. Well, also by the way, Queensberry Promotions on Twitter just put out an official statement with a picture of a cut of on Tyson Fury just over Tyson Fury right eye. Let me read the the statement real quick here. I'm old, so I gotta take my glasses off. It says here, WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury has been forced to postpone his fight with unified champion Alexander Usyk after sustaining a freak cut during a sparring session in Riyadh. The cut, which opened above Fury's right eye, required urgent medical attention and significant stitching and will obviously require a period of recovery, scuppering any possibility of the fight with Usyk taking place on 17th February and, and, and that's in another, Saudi Arabia. And that's another thing to consider, too. You're sparring southpaws. So sometimes, right. you know, sometimes uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the risk of a cut uh, in a fight with lefty versus righty, it increases. So also in sparring sessions. The only time in my career I ever had a pull out of a fight due to a cut was uh, uh, fighting against, uh, I was training for a southpaw and I got cut uh, mm. with an elbow from uh, one of my southpaw sparring partners. That would have been the only fight that Paulie and I fought on the same card. It would have been. Oh. I'll go, a, I'll go a step further for you guys because you guys know that I've been cut in my career. My dad, and, and I'm just pay, I'm paying homage to my dad right now. You you guys know we wear the big headgear, we wear the bar, all that kind of stuff. Hated that wasn't those. enough Hated for those. my dad. Hated those. My dad, but that wasn't enough for my dad. My dad took the cushion out of a shoe and taped it around the headgear. So now my I'm see I got this much vision. I can't. I hate that. I'm sparring. I, I need because I need, my dad wanted to make sure. How did sure you see? How do you how do you we, work your reflexes? How do you work? Well, when you've been your... cut the way you've been cut by Otto Wallin and other things like that, you have to go to the extent. Well, Fury's a reflex fighter. Thing, Fury's a reflex it, fighter, though, man. I mean, you gotta have. But if you truly want this thing, you gotta do what it takes to stay safe. Y'all know that by I now. I always wanted no open, excuses. I always wanted open headgears because I needed to train my eyes to see, and yeah, those those I, extra protective headgears, I couldn't see out the angles very well. I was the so same. I, I was always the same I way. always spar with an open face, um, and because I wanted to train my eyes to see, it was very very. 
I remember a uh, buddy McGurk when I was in camp with him wanted me to wear the the, the, the bar. bar across my face. But I, I lasted like two rounds. I told him, get this thing off me right now because I'm about to throw a temper tantrum <laughs> in this whole gym. Get this thing off me right now. I only and did I the bar. I only did the bar at the very end of my career. I was like, I would rather be full open because mm -hmm. I was a reactive fighter too. I, I needed I needed my eyes and my 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 feet and my my abilities. But yeah, toward the end I started wearing the head you know yeah. the headgear. wasn't you, wasn't as reactive. You know what's another <laughs> aspect of this story? is how is the Saudi Arabia, how are they going to respond? How are they going to adjust the card to this fight now? Because they have a card every, set up for February 17th. So that's another thing yeah, to the watch. the whole card, right? Yeah. yeah, the whole card should go under. I yeah. mean, Oof. it's... Yeah, and of course, any, any changes to that, of course, we'll have it for you here on Top Stories. And before we leave, we have some, some sad news from the world of boxing. The Japanese Boxing Commission announced that bantamweight Kazaki Anaguchi passed Zuki. away after suffering a brain injury and undergoing brain surgery after a brutal December 26th fight against Seiya Tsutsumi. Anaguchi was just 23 years old. So our condolences to the family and friends and the Japanese Boxing Commission surrounding the death and the passing of Kazuki Anaguchi.